Hey, what's up? It's Jim, and I just got back from the new film, America. Or, America, Imagine the World Without Her. Political documentaries tend to be for the side that agrees with them, whether it's left or right. They're not really films that change people's minds about their political decisions. They're just strongly preaching to the converted kind of propaganda. And since Dinesh D'Souza's last film, 2016 Obama's America, he's actually gotten a lot better at it. That film was the second highest grossing political documentary domestically. This film, he's gotten a lot better as a filmmaker, or him and John Sullivan. This is definitely a lot more professional. They have a lot of more expensive set pieces and scenes with actors in them playing Abe Lincoln and George Washington and various historical situations. I'm not sure if that's because the producer of this film, Gerald R. Mullen, uh, produced films like Jurassic Park and won an Oscar for Schindler's List and worked with Spielberg quite a bit. Maybe it was his involvement, I don't know. I'm kind of assuming Dinesh D'Souza had something to do with it and he's gotten a little bit better at making his films and made his propaganda skills better than he was the first time because in the last film he would have interviews with people and it would seem like sometimes the interviews would wouldn't go his way, but Dinesh D'Souza would for some reason leave it in the film. And in this film, he does have people like Noam Chomsky and a uh, Native American activist and various other talking heads throughout the film, and he doesn't really have lengthy discussions with them. He kind of sets them up and introduces them. He spends probably almost as much time introducing them as actually using them in the film, and then cuts away and goes on with his argument about the things that make American feel bad about being America with slavery and imperialism and war and capitalism and the ruining of the American dream and he goes through how those exactly happened and how those things we know about them that are untrue or at least according to him and he gives us kind of a history lesson particularly this film goes against Howard Zinn and his people's history of America throughout the film and this is a companion piece to Inesh D'Souza's book American Imagine the World Without Her and he wants to show how Howard Zinn's theories are wrong but the interesting thing about his thing with Howard Zinn he never puts forth any quotes from Howard Zinn's book and I understand maybe he couldn't get the rights to do that but you kind of get a brief understanding of that and you see Howard Zinn with various liberal celebrities but you don't actually get many direct theories from it whereas later when he goes through Sal Alansky he does use actual quotes from him this film is so focused on Zinn and a particular book and it doesn't actually use things from the book, which makes me think, you know, the thing with political documentaries like this, whatever the side, it's such a controlled source that it's kind of controlling the information and not letting information through that will be a counterpoint to your own information, which always makes me very hesitant. Throughout this film, he makes it very black and white. At first, he's kind of doing more of a historical debate, laying out that, yes, these things were bad, but even some of the things he just gives counterpoints that are more like incredible exceptions, particularly when he's talking about slavery and how African Americans have been treated in America. And he uses an exception from a black businesswoman, Madam C.J. Walker, and how there were various black plantation owners who owned slaves. And it's like, sure, that is an interesting point, I guess, but that doesn't make racism a non-point in what happened throughout America. I think he feels that if he debates these and reasons them out, then you'll have no answer to it anymore. And that's kind of the problem with these kind of films. It's like, it feels like it's giving you an answer to very complex problems. And even though he's doing that throughout, doing his bullet points at the beginning, he gives you the bullet points of what exactly are the things that America is ashamed of, of its past. But then he goes into, after going through Zinn's theories, he goes into Sal Alansky and how Sal Alansky had these theories and how he very influenced Hillary and Hillary knew him and was going to have him speak at her college and how he influenced Obama. And then he starts to get in kind of his conservative conspiracy theories. He puts it a step too far and he likes to talk about himself almost like Al Gore does in, in Inconvenient Truth, where I think in Al Gore's case it was actually more inappropriate. Dinesh D'Souza tries to mix it into the film, so you kind of feel like it's a little more warranted, but it's nonetheless a little like too much. He really likes to interject himself into this. I always felt Dinesh D'Souza is kind of like the 
conservative answer to Michael Moore. Certainly they're a lot different and he attacks Moore a lot more in this film. He didn't really in the last film. Moore would interject himself a lot more in ways he brings in Flint, Michigan after Roger and me that don't exactly help the narrative. It seems like kind of a sidetrack. And Dinesh D'Souza does kind of the same things where he kind of has a thesis but then he just kind of goes on his own thing that he wants to talk about. And now that he has like these actors to reenact certain situations for him and with better cinematography and better editing than he had last time, he's putting more effort into making that point than he did last time. And more impressively, I feel like he feels he can go on these rants more so than he did last time because he has that production value, he has that money. He's certainly one of the few documentarians who, who after had a big hit, you can tell in their next film that they're going to up the budget quite a bit. Usually documentary, they don't up the budget because there's no money in documentary, really. But Dinesh D'Souza is a little more ambitious. Even Michael Moore doesn't really do things like that. Or if he did, he wasn't as obvious about it as Dinesh D'Souza is. It's definite propaganda. It's the reason I don't really like Michael Moore's films or very many political documentaries because it's almost like why would I watch something that I'm just going to sit there and agree with? What's the point in watching that? I think intellectually it's a very boring pursuit. To me, left or right or whatever the cause is, stuff like this isn't really interesting. It's just very flatly boring to me and intellectually lame. And I think a big studio blockbuster at its weakest is doing probably a bit more than a film like this is. So it's almost tucking you into bed if you're a conservative and making you realize that everything you thought is all right, but also kind of doing its boogeyman scares, but not in the way that's actually going to scare you. It's just going to get you to have a new argument to yell at your friends if you're into politics. This time he's really more going against a particular ideology, but in the same way Michael Moore does with Fahrenheit 9-11, where he's like, well, don't vote for Bush. Please don't vote for Bush. This is why they're wrong. He's not also supporting someone. And I feel like the same way with Dinesh D'Souza. And it's a problem with this film as well. It's like he's going against Hillary and Obama. He did show certain Republican politicians, but he doesn't really outright endorse anyone. He does, when he talks about the great presidents, bring up Reagan a few times, which I thought was fairly entertaining because he did work for Reagan and, you know, conservatives love Reagan. These kind of films are very controlled filmmaking in a way that even Hollywood couldn't imagine. And this feels so much like this is Dinesh D'Souza's way and this is his theory and you should listen to it and he's right and I'm going to disprove all these people. Introducing theories that don't go anywhere, taking down the Democrats, but not really showing what the conservatives have to counter that. He doesn't want to do that. He wants to show how evil the left is and say like, this is why we need to stop this. He likes calling out the problem rather than bringing out the solution. Whatever political cause you have, I thought that's kind of why people want to be in politics is to create a solution and to solve problems and to change the country, not to debate on why things are evil. It's kind of a boring debate when you know someone's completely on one side and they're not really going to admit other sides or that it's bad to talk negatively about a particular person just because you're on that side in the first place, whether it's Obama or Reagan or Bush or whichever. Dinesh D'Souza, I've never actually read any of the books these films are based on. This is the second film of his and the second one I've seen. And it just seems to me that he's not letting a debate even try to start. Like he introduces these talking heads and he then does not use them. Why have Noam Chomsky in your movie? Chomsky's in the trailer, you're definitely selling all the people at the beginning that are the talking heads in your film, but then you're not using them. And I don't like kind of controlled arguments where we can't go any further, this is this is the way it is and you have to listen to it, is, is the kind of ugly side of what editing and what people call emotional manipulation and filmmaking can do is make you really believe in a particular side. And it's used to sell Coca-Cola, and it's used to sell Ninja Turtles and Transformers toys, but it's also used to sell political beliefs. And it's certainly a side of filmmaking that's been going on for the entire history of film. Watching these kind of films makes me think that you should really strive for more intellectually that I would recommend maybe if you're very upset about Howard Zinn's book. Um, I don't know if Dinesh D'Souza's book uses exact examples from that, but I would maybe look at that and see the other side. And I kind of like to see different kinds of films. I don't 
like <laughs> this movie really, and I don't really love propaganda. His theories are clearly more important to him than the filmmaking. It just felt like a better produced version of his first film. Just different theories behind it, supporting the conservative movement and ripping apart the left, particularly Obama. It's so manipulated and so brought to you in a particular way, and certainly a lot of documentaries are that way, but this feels so manufactured within an inch of its life. It's like hard to trust it more than the people it says that are controlling all these things. This film is even more controlled than his conspiracy theories about the liberal, that it kind of makes me very dubious of them. And I think you should be a lot more open-minded than this film certainly is. Thank you.